30 feared dead. Others injured as bandits attacked two cats in a local government areas. Niger Governors Forum rejects federal government 60,000 Naira minimum wage proposal. Court reserves judgment in the post Emir Bayero's fundamental rights suit. And on the foreign scene, Bene arrests five Nigerians in escalating diplomatic standoff. Hello and welcome to Trust TV's news update. I am Chiamaka Mafo. Thank you for joining us. 30 people are feared dead following fresh multiple attacks by armed bandits from several villages in Dunsama and Safana local government areas of Katsina State. Dosama and Safana are two of the frontline local government areas where activities of bandits have been increased despite security agencies and government interventions to decimate insurgency in the areas. An eyewitness said that the affected villages, 13 in number, were attacked in the evening hours of Tuesday, 4th June 2024. The eyewitness's father revealed that the multiple attacks frightened most of the residents who have now migrated to safer communities and areas like Dosama. When contacted, the spokesman of the Katsina Police Command, Abu Rukh Sadiq, confirmed the incident in Dusama local government area, but said he doesn't have the details of the Safana local government area's incident. Other state governor Alex O.T. has increased the 25 million naira bounty placed on the killers of five soldiers at Obikabia Junction in Aba Abia State to 30 million naira. Now, OT announced this on Friday when the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Hassan Abubakar Pedima, visited Mvosi, Isialangwaluk, South Local Government area of the state. This is coming barely a week after the governor vowed to give 25 million naira to anyone who can provide information leading to the arrest of the perpetrators. On May 30, five soldiers were killed at Obikabia Junction in Aba. The attack was reportedly carried out by suspected members of the prescribed indigenous people of Biafra in a bid to enforce sit at home. The governor said that the increase in the bounty was by an addition of 5 million naira by an indigene of the state based in the United States of America. The national leadership of the National Association of Nigerian Students have promised to resist any act of oppression or suppression of students on campus across the country. National President of the Student Body, Loki Omenefe, made this declaration when he led union members in a peaceful protest to the Ajayi Koda University campus, Oyo, where he called for thorough investigation into the gruesome killing of Alex Akro, a 200 level mechanical engineering student who was allegedly tortured to death by his colleagues. The report. Nigeria Tempers have reached boiling point over the recent murder of Alex Akro, a 200-level mechanical engineering student of the Ajayi Kauda University. Kingsmen of the deceased Delta Prince in company of student union leaders are here at the campus site to ascertain the circumstances surrounding his death. The union leaders barricaded the school entrance while insisting on meeting the school's management. They want the school authorities to unravel the masterminds of the killing. The killing of Nigeria students in their campuses is too much. We want to put an end to it. So we are here to get a first-hand information from the management of this institution. Going forward, any act of suppression, compression, repression, that Alex has passed through, we condemn it in his entirety. The way he was treated, we condemn it in his entirety. No parents will allow their children to pass through such treatment. Henceforth, the leadership of NANS demanded for justice. Management yielded to the demands of the student union as they were taken round the crime scene. It was then that we took the body to Ibadan. We knew that autopsy must be done. If it were just a further uh, going somewhere and you died, it would have been another thing entirely. But the Deputy Commissioner of Police in the Bible told us that while doing that, the parents and everybody must be 
I mean, they must be part of, just like you have actually asked for. This money, payment is be made. That is to show you that we do not have anything to hide. Student Union Leadership and Kingsmen of the Deceased Student converge on the ancient city of Ibadan to call on security agencies and all stakeholders to get to the root of the matter. As we speak to you, 13 students have been arrested over this case and they have been charged to court this morning. They are already remanded where? Agodi. At Agodi. And we have demanded from the management that we want them to release the names of all the 13 students arrested over this case and their faculty so that we can verify that they are what? They are genuine students. Also, the security men on duty, the porter, everybody that were on duty that are supposed to do their job, that did not do their job, were also arrested and also charged along with the arrested students. If the demand are not rich, we take other options. It is step by step. First of all, we want to thank Nigeria police for swinging into action. But most importantly, you cannot take them to court without meeting the family. At least the family has the right, has the right to know those who murdered their son by parading them first. And the school needs to release the full detail of those that are involved. This is the first, thing, first step to be taken before taking them to the court. The school was meant to, they didn't even inform the family until hours after this thing had happened. Unfortunately, getting to the school, we realizing that they had cleaned up the crime scene and a whole lot of things are not as, you, as it should be. So this is sad, this is painful, but the boy is gone, he's not coming back. The most we can do is to get justice for him and we'll do that. I think the government should, should go in deeply on this issue because bullying nowadays is like as if mothers are raising monsters. Know your child, know the, the, the level of anger they have, and, and just be closer to your child because how can you beat up a, 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 a boy, a child like you? Like, how old are they? They're just 22, 22, 21 years old. How can you comfortably beat a child to death and you feel no remorse about it? 22 year old Alex Acro is a prince in the Uvwe and Wari kingdom of Delta State. But after a report of late singer Leri Olua, a lover popularly known as Mobad, has revealed drug reaction as a possible cause of his death. According to reports, the autopsy and toxicology tests, which were conducted at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, suggested the possibility of a fatal anaphylactic shock or drug reaction as a possible cause of Mobad's death. Anaphylactic shock is a severe allergic reaction that can be life threatening. According to the report, the hospital retrieved samples of the late singer's gastric contents, blood, bone marrow, liver, kidney and lung for a toxicology test. The reports were said to have showed traces of diphenhydramine, an antihistamine in the late singer's blood system. Now, antihistamines are drugs used to treat allergies, stomach problems, colds and anxiety, among other conditions. Over to minimum wage stories, governments of 36 states of the Federation have rejected the 60,000 Naira minimum wage earlier proposed by the federal government. The director of media and public affairs of the Nigerian Governors Forum, Halima Salihu Ahmed, discloses in a statement on Friday. The governor said the 60,000 Naira wage is not realistic and unsustainable, arguing that if implemented, it would force some states in the country to be borrowing to pay workers' salaries. Recall that the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, and the Trade Union Congress, TUC, had on Monday embarked on an indefinite strike action after rejecting the federal government's 60,000 naira offer as minimum wage. In the meantime, some members of the organized private sector have demanded some concessions regarding the new minimum wage being proposed by members of the National Minimum Wage Tripartite Committee. Now, specifically, a member of the National Association of Small and Medium Enterprises, NASMA, in an exclusive interview with Daily Trust, said they would not disagree with the government if it decides to raise the minimum wage above 100,000 naira. He said they would rather demand tax holidays or exemption from paying the agreed amount if it is over 100,000 naira, stressing that the amount some members of the private sector could afford is 60. 
thousand naira. Move over to Kano State, where a federal high court number three sitting in the state is set to deliver judgment on its jurisdiction to entertain the case of breach of fundamental human rights filed by the 15th Emir of Kano, Aminu Ado Bayero. The presiding judge told both parties that he will communicate the date to also rule over on whether Aminu Ado can continue being the Emir of Kano or otherwise. Alaji Aminu Ado Bayero had filed a case before the court asking it to order the removal of Muhammad Sunusi II from the Kano Emir's palace. Nigeria's Competition and Consumer Protection Tribunal sitting in the country's capital Abuja has fined multi-choice Nigeria the total sum of 115 million naira for challenging the court's jurisdiction and ordered the company to provide the one-month free DSTV and GoTV subscription for its customers. The judgment was delivered today by a bench of three judges led by Famas Okosu. Recall that the tribunal had previously issued an interim stay order that had restrained multi-choice from increasing its subscription rates pending the hearing and determination of a motion on a notice filed by Barrister Festus Onifade. Onifade sued multi-choice Nigeria Limited and the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission for unjustly increasing subscription fees without one month notice to customers. The Federal Operation Unit Zone B Kaduna of the Nigerian Customs Service has arrested a suspected smuggler with a consignment of pangolin scales worth 3.96 billion naira within the Kebi state axis of the zone. Zone B controller Amadou Bello Shoaibu would disclose this when he paraded the suspect as well as the bags containing the pangolin scales said the main culprit is on the run. The report. He said the team discovered an evacuated sacks of pangolin scales, which were transported to the headquarters of FOU Zone B in Kaduna. He pointed out that one suspect was arrested in connection with the seizure, while the main suspect is currently at large, saying the unit is collaborating with other sister agencies to arrest the main suspect and bring him to book. Our activities are knowledge driven intelligent based we on our part have already sworn that we are going to work to ensure that smuggling of goods and services as well as killing of endangered species in this area of our area of coverage will not be allowed he explained that the pangolin species is one of the endangered species protected by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. The controller said Nigeria is a signatory to the CITES Convention and all forms of trading in this species are clearly illegal. National security is paramount. If Nigeria is a country, <clears throat> is allowed to be used as a dumping ground or as a hub for illegal activities. We will lose our name in, within the international uh, community. He further warned that those involved in the illegal trafficking of endangered species are hiding under it to lend the money used in procuring drugs, arms, and other illegal merchandise. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kaduna. This is the news update on Trust TV. Up ahead. Amidst high demand, tomato farmers fear produce loss due to plant infections. More when we return. Please do stay with us. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. And if you're joining us, this is the news update on Trust TV. A recap of our top stories. 30 fear dead. Others injured as bandits attacked two Katsina local government areas. And we also told you that Nigerian Governors Forum reject federal government 60,000 Naira minimum wage proposal. To more news, in Imo State, residents are expressing mixed feelings over the ongoing vaccination for children against cervical cancer. The vaccine, which is being carried out by the government, has continued to attract attention as most parents refuse to give consent. Ajibade Praise tells us more. 
The government rolled out the vaccination exercise in the state. For immunization against cervical cancer. And it is between children that are 9 years of age to 14 years of age. It goes to help you to prevent against cervical cancer. So wherever you are, tell your friends that it is free. It is normal that you should take it. It is for your own benefit. While some parents are reluctant giving their consents for their words to be vaccinated, others are saying they won't, following the claim that the vaccine is not safe. That vaccine that I'm hearing about, it's like that thing is no good for children. It's no good for children. If it is me, I have a child too. I will not allow her to take it because it's no good for their health in future. They may have problem. No, I will not allow them to take it because it will affect them in the future. I want the federal government to look into it and stop it. And I have a daughter within that range. I will allow her to take the vaccination because when you are not informed, you are deformed. So I think I'm aware that there is need for my daughter to take this vaccination, given that the word cancer is, is a very dangerous disease that needs to be prevented. The Commissioner for Health in the state, Prosper Success Ohayaga, said the vaccine is safe and good at fighting cervical cancer. These vaccines contain just the proteins from the outer shell of some of the strains of the human papilloma virus. And these proteins are harmless on their own, totally harmless, but they are able to trigger off an immune response. So when the body sees it, sees this virus, they say, oh, we already know you. You are not good to be in this body. And the body fights it. It is very safe. I must tell the populace, my people, in the Imo, in the Nigeria, that even today, my daughter, who is within this age group, has co called and I gave a consent for this. What is good for the goose is good for the gander. If I will tell my daughter to do it because of tomorrow, I will ask every mother, every father to give consent to our girl child. He urged parents to make good use of the opportunity to vaccinate their female children between the age of 9 and 14 years of age against cervical cancer. Ajibade praise. Trust TV News. Oweri. Now we go to Katana State where tomato farmers are facing a relentless enemy, a tiny insect called Tutor Absoluta. Despite being a major cultivator of tomato, that's Katana State, the pest is laying waste to tomato crops, leaving a, tri a trail of financial ruin. Jamil Mabar reports on the crisis in the state where the situation is particularly dire. Lawal Baku, a tomato farmer, lost his entire three hectare of farmland to leaf miner infestation. Tuta absoluta. A tiny bug with a ravenous appetite is destroying tomato farms across Katsina State and beyond. The pest resistance to all known pesticides makes it even a formidable foe for farmers. It is destructive and it's so tiny you can't see the pest. Lowell says the pest is unlike anything he has ever seen before. 14 years ago, I took credit from banks, planted 3 hectares of tomato. I lost everything due to the pest. Katsina is a major tomato producer in Nigeria, but the scorching heat, a possible consequence of climate change, has created the perfect breathing ground for Tuta. Absoluta. During heat in Ajio, in places like Ajua and Kankara, farmers escaped with just one fifth of what they planted and lost everything. Irrigation farmers can't plant tomato due to high cost of fuel, 
for irrigation pumps, which makes irrigation farming difficult and expensive. Tomato price is high. Farmers don't have money to farm. Those who can afford to farm buy petrol at high price. Burdened by debt, Lowell has been forced to switch from tomato farming to retailing tomatoes. The crisis isn't confined to Kasana. Hundreds of kilometers away in Kankara, Kabir paint a green picture. <laughs> the leaf miner has no cure. If you spend 10 million naira, the pest will destroy it in less than a day. The battle against Tuta Absolute is far from over. Farmers desperately need solutions to save their crops and their way of life. Jamil Mabai, Trust TV, Kazana. In business, the International Monetary Fund has predicted that Niger's economy will reach $1.85 trillion by 2029 in purchasing power parity terms. This forecast suggests a significant growth trajectory for the country's economy over the next five years. According to the IMF data, Nigeria's gross domestic product in PPP terms has been steadily increasing. GDP is the most commonly used single measure of a country's overall economic activity. PPP is a theory that relates changes in exchange rates to changes in price levels between countries, allowing for more accurate international comparisons of economic data. On the international scene, Benin Republic authorities have arrested five Nigerians at a port in Benin, accusing them of entering the site fraudulently. This is the latest in a diplomatic row between the two West African nations. The Nigerians were arrested late on Wednesday at the port of Seme, Boji, which has become a flashpoint in relations between the neighbors. Landlocked Niger runs a pipeline from its oil fields to the port on the Atlantic coast to export its crude. Under regional sanctions imposed on Niger after a July coup, Benin closed the border but has since reopened it. Niger's military rulers, however, have refused to reopen their side. And finally, in sports, Nigeria will go top of Group C in the 26 World Cup qualifying series with a win over South Africa on Friday night. The Super Eagles, who were absent at the 2022 edition in Qatar, have recorded two draws in their first two fixtures. Ahead of the clash with Bafana Bafana, the three-time African champions are seated in fourth position. This follows Benin Republic's 1-0 victory over Rwanda on Thursday. Rwanda's failure to get something out of the game is, however, a blessing in disguise for the Eagles who must beat South Africa to take full advantage of the result. After facing Bafana Bafana today, the Georgia's men have another tricky test against Benin Republic on Monday, while South Africa will play Zimbabwe. And that's it for news update at this hour. For more news up programs and documentaries, please do want to follow us on all our social media platforms and on our YouTube live streams. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Thank you for joining us.